coming out this year. Lego sets. They are too. And, and some other stuff, I guess. All that more right now on the first of the noon of 2018. Hello and welcome to the first up at noon of this year, 20. 1 8 2018 aka you, you managed to really even botch the name of the year I screwed it up 21 8 21 8 21 8 the year of 21 8 i want to make it sound more sci-fi 2018 yeah. just sounds boring uh, uh up at noon is our weekly comedy variety <laughs> show here at ign i'm brian altano this is max scoville uh, i want to give a quick shout out to jordan parkhurst who does the intro graphics for the show and a million other little things his brother dan parkhurst produces the show their entire family works on this show I don't know how or why, but we hired all of them. They're, just yeah, like, they're like the boxcar children. They just kind of rolled yeah. up. We they're got like them by a, the bolt, by the batch. <laughs> it's his birthday. Yeah. yeah. And it's his birthday. There he is. He's the Happy one on the birthday, right. Happy birthday, Jordan. He's the, smiling, he's the most smiling one because yeah. of his birthday. Um, yeah, he normally does the news videos that we put up on IGN that are like, great news, everybody. It's Call of Duty released the sales figures, and it sold more than ever. And he has to like put graphics on that. But once a week, we turn him off the, off the chain, and he makes like terrible, weird photoshops and has like Predator shooting himself in the head or whatever. And we don't know what that looks like until we start doing the show. So, so Jordan, it's a surprise. thank you. Yeah. Happy birthday. Um, and yeah, the Parkhurst family, they're kind of like, the, like a really nice version of like the O'Doul's from Billy Madison, <laughs> or O'Doyle's. You know, they don't ever drive off a cliff I mean, or anything like that. In the, their brothers, I could see that. Yeah, they're just like this they're, like, gang of they're brothers. Like brothers. Like, yeah, That's Parkers. about where the similarities stop. Um, <laughs> yeah, thank you guys for joining us. This is a stupid show. We've been doing this uh, for just over, what, just over three years? Yeah. No, just over two years. A little behind the scenes. Uh, wait, this day is it? Yeah. Oh, oh tomorrow is my tomorrow is my three year anniversary at IGN. Oh my God! So we've been doing the show for like two and a half years. Uh, Do you know what you get? You get one wish. One wish. Mm -hmm. I wish more people would watch this show. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we have fun doing this. I like. I I really love what this show has become in the past. You know, two and a half years. Me too. Um, uh, you put up the uh, unaired pilot over the break, and oof. Yeah, that was a piece of turd. Well, it, we're all, yeah, I mean, at the same time, it's also very much the same thing. It's all about kind of practice and doing what we love to do. Uh, I would love to do this show like every day if we could and just come out and be like, what's in the news today? We're like, oh, I haven't had enough coffee, but here's a toy. Let's play with the toys. Um, let's get into the news real quick uh, right now. Uh, first things first, uh, I don't know if you guys caught it over the break. Uh, Netflix dropped one of their biggest movie projects to date. It was called Bright. It was the David Ayer directed, Max Landis written, starring Will Smith and Joel Edgerton, who played uh, who played young Owen Lars in Attack of the Clones. You might know him from that role. Is that him, that orc? He was the orc, yeah. It basically, it was kind of like David Ayer does, you know, End of Watch and Training Day and stuff like that. And they were like, what if that had wizard <laughs> stuff in it? And they made it, and the movie was sort of critically panned, and it came out like two days before Christmas. So I feel like some people probably watched it because they were sitting on the couch uh, anyway. 11 million people. Oh watched. yeah, so 11 million, million people watched it. It's actually I, one of I the most popular look, things I'm they've ever put on Netflix. I don't, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Did they autoplay it? You I, don't have I, to buy it. You I, just no, rent I mean, Netflix no, every single I month. said I don't, I know I don't buy it. Uh, the point is they said the same thing about that Adam Sandler like cowboy comedy he did yeah. a while ago. Like the, was it the, the, the dis Disgusting Eight or something? Yeah. But yeah. that was Painful the whole thing. Is, that, no. that would like, that would roll automatically. It would just be like, oh, you want to watch it? Because like Netflix is all sort of algorithms driven. Anyway, uh, this movie has been out for, what, like two weeks, week and a half, something like that, and they already announced that there's going to be a Bright 2, a sequel. Uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's, that's all right, I guess. They're doing it. It just feels weird with Netflix, though, because like, they don't come out with box office numbers. They're like, yes, 11 million people watched it yeah. who are already subscribed, so they didn't actually make any new money off yeah, of that? Yeah, I find, I find that entire business model fascinating. And obviously, Netflix has brought us a lot of cool stuff this year. We'll talk about some of it in a second. But um, where does this sort of leave cr critics? I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter, right? Because if a bunch of people are like, it's not good, and other people are like, well, it played automatically on my TV, and I watched it without shutting it yeah, off. I, like, honestly, you don't. if you saw this movie and you hated it, do you go, I want my money back? Because then you lose out on all the other Netflix shows that you do like. Like I don't. Yeah. It's really weird. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of funny to think about. It's also Netflix hasn't done a ton of movies. They've done a lot of original shows, but mm -hmm. for them to do a movie is just. It's an. I don't know. It, people watch movies in one sitting, whereas a show is like. It's almost like a badge of honor to be like, oh, I binge watched this. Like I burned through an entire season of this. It's like, oh, when are you gonna like? Have you watched all of Stranger Things? And it's like, no, I'm on only episode episode six yet. And it's like, oh, well, it's gonna get really crappy next episode. You know? Right. Uh, but it's like a totally different model. It's kind of strange. If you love this movie, do you do you buy it on Blu-ray? It's not out on Blu-ray. It's just 
streaming. It's just there. You already own it, sort of, but you uh, don't, you know? Towards the end of the year last year, Netflix made a movie called The Babysitter, which was a sort of like horror comedy movie that both of us really loved. Yeah, that was fun as I don't hell. know if we really got to talk about it on the show. Go dig that up. It's super campy and uh, just disgustingly sort of over the top in terms of how much blood and gore there is. Yep. Um, it feels like a, a tinge Tarantino and then a little bit of Breakfast Club. It was kind of like a, almost like a, so, sort of softcore porny Home Alone slasher flick. Yes, it was very Home alone -y. But funny, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. I mean, I honestly, I I feel like I should give Bright another shot. I got about 40 minutes in and I was like, you know, I'm going to die someday. Yeah. And I could really just spend the next 90 minutes of my life doing something else. So I, I don't know what I did. I, I probably like... Yeah, I feel like with that, like I'll either just watch, uh, I don't know, like Training Day or watch a movie that has an orcs in yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, honestly, I'd, I would rather just watch Training Day or Lord of the Rings kind of separately. Yeah. You know, like, I get the mashup thing. It's a cool idea, but, um, yeah, maybe the second one will uh, will we'll kick it in the ass. Um, you know, other kind of wizard-related stuff that everyone watches news, Game of Thrones uh, is is coming back for a, a whole a whole other season. It's going to be an eight, eight seasons. Cool, be really, I can't wait to watch it's gonna it gonna be this great. year. Well, 21-8. It's going to be coming out in 2019, so hang out. Just hang, hang tight. Just don't. It's not gonna be here for a while, and that's 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 the the, the ice witch, whatever his name is. He's just being like, "What? Come on, dude." Uh, so I mean, he's like, "What are you doing all year?" Uh, I, I, am. I don't know. It's gonna be it's it's gonna be fine. I, I know, like that. I, honestly, like, I, I, that just reminded me. This is the eighth season, so there are seven seasons of Game of Thrones, which is like a hundred and ten hours. Um, this feels like a good time to rewatch those. Like this year, just slowly spread that out over the year. I kind of want to. I kind of want to finish it first and then go back and rewatch it. I probably won't do that. I could also watch shows I haven't seen yet, mm -hmm. of which there are plenty. But there is that thing where you watch like the first season of Game of Thrones and you're like, "Oh wow, these are all children still. Like, or right. this character is still alive. I forgot about him." And it's like there's so much stuff that happens over the course of those seven seasons that you kind of forget how everything shuffles around. I've never actually rewatched that show. I'm rewatching Breaking Bad right now and it's um, still incredibly intense and uh, nerve wracking and I know everything that's going to happen, but still watching it unfold is really interesting. And I think Game of Thrones is so uh, similar in that a lot of people die on Breaking Bad and a lot more people die on Game of Thrones, like really beloved, deeply cared about characters. Mm -hmm. So I think seeing them and not knowing, or not knowing they were gonna die when I watched it the first time was shocking. Um, knowing they will, will change it a little. So, or I'll just watch something else this, else this year. But yeah, six episodes, 2019. Uh, there are six hours of that show left also, forever, and yeah. then they'll start pumping out the spinoffs. Well, when they say like when they say like six episodes, you're like, oh, that's six hours. It's like that could be like that could be 12 hours. They got they started getting long towards the end of those. Yes. And also, one thing that's really cool about that show is how they allocate the budget. Mm -hmm. Like the first season, there were no dragons. Everyone's like, where are the dragons? And it's like, oh, we'll keep subscribing to HBO, and we'll afford we'll be able to afford dragons in right. no time. I mean, uh, you think about something like the Battle of the Bastards, which yeah. uh, is probably the most impressive. That was a TV movie. Show. That was a yeah. movie. That Seriously. was a movie episode. Yeah, like that was crazy. Um, yeah, and I mean, watching that and like standing up in my living room, I'm not even deeply connected to Game of Thrones. I couldn't name half the characters on it, despite seeing every episode. Part of the reason why I want to do a rewatch. Um, also, they have very confusing names, like you know, Rathtar the the Bold or whatever. Um, but watching that episode, I stood up and just kind of stared at my TV, just like in horror, like. Yeah. Like that. And that's awesome. I want to do that again. That show has given me nightmares. Yep. There's some crazy stuff that happens in that. So mm -hmm. anyway, uh, we missed you, Game of Thrones. Please come back in a year, I guess. Uh, <laughs> in other exciting news, I, I guess, there's no news this week. What do you want? Nintendo Switch is the fastest selling video game system of all time. Right. That is unbelievable. Uh, to be fair... They only had like the best launch lineup in the history of anything ever. And if you look at just like launch window, like the first, what, nine months? Yeah, March to uh, January of that system are just sort of like un unmatched in, in terms of at least first party perspective. Um, and then towards the end of the year, we got to see a bunch of third parties jump on board. It was cool to see, you know, Rockstar and Bethesda. And That's such a huge vote of confidence too, that like these, you know, third parties that typically, oh, hey, we're finally streaming on the Switch. Look at that. All right. Now, if you're watching this at home, just put your hands up on the, on the Joy-Cons there. Yep. And it'll feel like we are the handheld show 
you've been waiting for. So we have a quote from Nintendo here. Uh, the home console that players can take everywhere they go launched March 3rd, 2017, and in 10 months has sold more than 4.8 million units in the United States, according to Nintendo's internal sales figures. That's the highest total for the first 10 months of any home video game system in U.S. history, surpassing Nintendo's own Wii system, which was the previous record holder, with more than 4 million units during the same time frame. Now, also, they added that 60% of Switch owners have Mario Odyssey and 55% have Breath of the Wild, which is uh, really surprising. Because you know, I, I always, I, I, one day I want to do like, uh, and I don't know where to do this, maybe like a video game conference or something, but a man on the street interview style segment where I talk to people who bought a Switch but don't own either of those games. That's got to be so weird. It's like, so what do you play? They're like, oh, I really like the Bomber. Man, HD, or whatever. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, there are some stats yeah. when the uh, when the Switch launched. There are people who are just like, I'm not really a big Zelda guy, mm -hmm. but you know, uh, really into uh, yeah. Also, uh, you know, uh, milk yeah. that cow. I mean, really <laughs> worth noting about this is that they said this is a best-selling video game system. Uh, we've kind of gotten accustomed since the PS2 for video game systems to also be used for other stuff like DVD players or Netflix boxes. You can't watch movies on, no. on Switch. I think Hulu is coming to Hulu's it. Hulu's there now. Hulu's there now. Yeah, but like, that's just Hulu. There's no like, there's no Netflix. There's no streaming. There's no like, you know, built-in Nintendo movie store. No, nothing. So like, that is pretty much just games, which is crazy. Yeah, um, I, I actually sort of appreciate it for that. And I remember when when it first came out, we kind of dinged it for that, right? Like yeah. we're like, where are all the apps? And now I'm kind of like, I don't want any of the apps because it's this is the only. Thing, it's one of the only dedicated video game systems I own in 27 or 2018, mm -hmm. 21, yeah. 8, this great year, where people aren't messaging me or pinging me or there aren't notifications no, popping awesome. up. It's like it's just a, sort it's of a like great little theme. system. I'm really happy about it. I mean, I still occasionally get people being like, is it a good time to buy it? It's like, yes, dude, the ship has left, the train has left the, the ship store. The ships and trains are friends now. Go to the, go, get on board, whatever this vehicle is. So, like, to, uh, you know, to sort of just like quickly throw to the, the zeitgeist that is this whole thing um, with anecdotal evidence, which I love to do because it's really cool to see. You know, I travel a lot, you travel a lot. Um, Seeing people that you wouldn't normally associate with video game systems either playing this thing or talking about it at airports and stuff like that is really cool. I was at a doctor's office the other day and the three receptionists were talking about how they <laughs> all got Switches for Christmas. And oh, one of them was like, yeah, I really like Zelda and my husband got me the new Zelda game. But then when I opened up the box, I was like, oh, this doesn't play on my DS. And I'm just, I kind of just perked my large ears up for a second. I was like, oh, these are casuals. I love yeah. this. And she was like, and I found out that you can only play it on the Switch. And then he reached into like this bag and pulled out the Switch. And I was really happy. I have the new Nintendo DS. Huh. And anyway. I was like, okay. So I walked up and I was just like, hey, here's my like insurance information and all that. It changed for the new year. Also, have y'all played Overcooked? Because it's crazy. It's like a couple fighting simulator. <laughs> and you guys can make hamburgers together. It's definitely a couple's fighting simulator. Yeah, it's so great. So uh, um, it's, it's cool to see that out there. Um, there's rumors swirling about uh, Nintendo Direct coming up soon. So we'll get to see, hopefully, uh, what they have in store for us for 2018. Yeah. Besides Yoshi and Kirby, I want yeah, some Animal like Crossing. This, yeah. Um, so on that note, uh, we, we are live right now. I'm, I'm reading the chats. Uh, Tommy Tangerine said Max just had a stroke. No, I'm just trying to read the chat. A lot of people really want us to talk about Lego. We're going to talk about Lego in a second. People are making weird, rude hand gestures with the emoji. Please stop that. Don't do that with the hand with the hand symbols. Don't. What are they doing? Is they're it making? That? Oh, don't oh, don't that. show that. No. That. We're gonna stop that. I just did. That means a okay, everybody. We're pointing the keep up okay. the great work. Be yeah. okay, anyway. everyone. <laughs> Um, there's a lot of cool stuff happening in 2018. I think this is the sort of the time of year where like, there's no good news. There's nothing exciting happening. You get like a handful of teasers. Like, I think the Incredibles 2 Twitter put up like a funny like a teaser image of like toast. Uh, we're getting like a Wreck It Ralph sequel. We there's got like, a Slender Man trailer on. Yeah, we got right that's that's huge. Um, mm -hmm. But I just it's kind of cool to like take a look at what is happening in 2018 and and like get excited about it. So the big question is, what are you looking forward to this year? Yeah, I had this sort of realization uh, uh, this morning, actually. I saw one of those things. I think IGN tweeted out, like, the biggest game is 2018. And I was like, man, 2018 is going to be really cool. I can't wait for that year to start. And I was like, oh, we're in it. It's here. It's those here. things it's are happening, happening now. Yeah. Most will get yeah. delayed, probably. But that's why you got to also look forward to movies, which rarely get delayed. Um, so, I don't know. Let's talk about some of the things we're really hyped about this year. Sure. I think one of the big ones, uh, you and I are both, like, really big Far Cry guys. Yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, when I kind of stop and think about it, like that's one of my favorite franchises mm -hmm. that hasn't, that I haven't fallen off of, or that it kind of isn't. It's pretty. It's pretty predictable. <laughs> it's pretty consistent, kind of throughout. Um, Far Cry Five uh, didn't initially really grab my attention. Yeah. Um, I think the fact that it's in America, that's always been sort of almost this like game about like you know video game tourism, like you're going to a faraway land and exploring you know crazy environments, uh, and they're like, hey, it's uh, it's you know Redneck Rampage HD or whatever, and I was like, oh, that's fine, I guess. 
Uh, and then the more I hear about it and the more I see of this game, the more I am totally on board. Right. I think they're doing just enough to sort of open up how weird and goofy this world is. Games Radar had a story the other day oh, about yes. a mini game or a side quest in this game where you basically go to a farm and you uh, flamethrower a bunch of pigs and cows that are trying to have sex with each other and you roast their testicles. Right. They're like, they, they're bad, like they're GMO pigs that have yeah. like, they have like steroids in them or something. So uh, for every time you look at this game and you're like, it's a serious take on, you know, the alt-right and the, where, where all this is moving in America right now and it feels too real, uh, there's gonna be a lot of fantasy escapism nonsense in it's this game. It's still gonna Just be a like Far Cry game. Uh, I interviewed Dan Hay, the executive producer of this entire franchise the other day for a show we're doing called Ep Expert Mode. I can't wait to share that because it's like, it's, he's, he's, he's got a really good way of sort of setting a chill down your spine, but also mm -hmm. making you laugh about where this game can go. And for clarity, uh, this game was pitched a long time before the Trump administration, before any of this stuff, before the Tiki Torch guys started mm -hmm. coming out. Um, this is sort of coming into fruition in the world we live in now, but uh, he, you know, he's been thinking about this sort of like doomsday prepper you know, Montana backhunt yep. county stuff for a no, while. No, it's like now. it's like Waco, Texas. That was like 25 years ago or yeah. something. Um, but I'm I'm excited about that. Uh, also, like I think there's that kind of mentality. And we saw this a lot in the shift from like last generation to current gen of consoles of them kind of like sort of just upresing or putting over the PC version uh, of like I think Far Cry what was it Far Cry Four yeah. was on was on both or it was like very very close and it felt very very samey. Uh, the fact that this has kind of been in the oven for like a proper two years since the last time we got a fart, which was uh, Primal. Right. Um, I think this is going to be like properly feel like a current gen, like very gorgeous, you know, modern game. So. It, feels, it feels odd that like Ubisoft made such a big deal of sort of stopping the Assassin's Creed franchise and then mm -hmm. sort of rebooting it. Um, but we haven't had a Far Cry game in just as long. No, and no. you know this is this sort of feels like a brand new take on the franchise. Yeah, uh, another big game coming out this month. Even uh, I believe it comes out on the twenty third. Is Dragon Ball Fighters? Fighter Z. Z. Dragon Ball. I kind of wish it was called Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Uh, this is of course Arc System Works, the guys who did like Blaz Blue. Mm -hmm. uh, and this honestly just looks like like Dragon Ball games come out pretty consistently. There are so many of them out there. I think there's something like. I think there's something like 70. I could be crazy, but That's there's a insane. lot of games out there for Dragon Ball. And you know, we'll get like a cool like pixel art one for for 3DS that comes out and people, you know, some people play it, some people jump on it, but uh, to get one that people are this excited for is totally uh, out of the ordinary. Uh, we had Xenoverse 1 and 2 which were which were cool. They kind of almost had this like almost like a destiny type of approach where there was like a hub area and it was online, you could play with your friends and do some mm -hmm. fighting stuff. But to have like a return to form, here is a 2.5D fighting game. This is like the kind of thing that has enough of like a um, fighting game uh, developer pedigree behind it. Like Arc System Works knows what they're doing in terms of making like like solid, like you can you can play this at Evo kind of thing. Right. Uh, and I'm stoked about that because like, I don't know, these are characters I really care about, except for the super ones. I'm, not, I'm behind on super. This is also like, the, like a kind of low key, like one of the best looking video games ever made yeah. in terms of being so, so completely connected to the source material. It's the kind of thing that like, when my friends were watching Dragon Ball on TV when I was a kid, if you walked in the room and showed us this game, like we would have cried and pooped our pants at the same time. Oh yeah, time. no it's nuts. Um, Another big game coming out this year. We don't have a date for it yet. I'm hearing rumors of June 8th. Mm. Uh, there's some like release dates hovering around. The game is, of course, Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, Rockstar, in typical Rockstar fashion, has been very tight-lipped about it. Uh, this game is going to be great. You know, like they have such an incredible track record. There's like there's no universe in which this game comes out and people are like, meh, it's all right. Right. Uh, I mean, GTA 5. It's kind of insane. Uh, GTA 5 was still one of the best-selling games of 2017. Right. That game came out in 2013. It's worth noting that Rockstar, obviously, as you know, probably uh, undoubtedly the king of open world sandbox games. This is their first current gen game. Yeah. We yeah. haven't seen it. No, like, exactly. GTA V is a PS3 game running on PS4 and PC. Like yep. that, is, that is a game built around last gen architecture. So this is something that is uh, a built for the current gen, which is you know gigantic and, and way bigger and more vast. And B, something that I think they will probably port to the next gen. Yep. So this is going to scale for years. It's going to grow for years. Uh, GTA Online became a monster sales force like we've never seen before. Also, uh, uh, worth noting, if you go back and look at, at uh, Red Dead 1 compared to uh, Red Dead Redemption uh, compared with GTA 5, the, the mission structure is very similar. And there were a lot of mechanics they kind of introduced in Red Dead Redemption without sort of the 
massive world that GTA V was, right. uh, they kind of prototyped GTA V in Red Dead Redemption. So if you want to get an idea of what GTA VI is going to be like, this is a pretty good place to jump That's on. Really good point. Uh, even if you hate cowboys, and if you do, what's wrong with you? They're great. They got huge hats. They ride horses all day. It's very exciting. Max, uh, I am uh, vaguely fatigued on superhero movies. I still go see them all the time. They're always a great time, but they kind of just pass right through me. One of the ones that uh, I had one of my favorite theater experiences with, probably because we snuck in booze and had a really good time. God, yeah. Was Deadpool. Oh yeah. And so what's up with Deadpool 2? Uh, Deadpool 2, uh, that's coming out this summer. It's interesting, the first Deadpool came out on Valentine's Day weekend, and it was kind of record-breaking in that sense. And I think everyone was expecting it to go really either way. We, it was uh, Tim Miller's first directorial movie. It was it, like he'd, he'd made game trailers up until that point. Uh, we didn't know what was going to happen with this. And it's like, I think to this day it remains probably my favorite superhero movie if I had to pick one. Mm -hmm. uh, I've also loved Deadpool since I was like eight, which is wholly inappropriate. But... Um, I don't know. I feel like they just they got it right, and I think they're in a very good spot to continue getting it right. Uh, and I mean, we've got Josh Brolin as Cable. Uh, I think honestly, like I love the X Men side of the Marvel universe, and it breaks my heart that they haven't quite nailed the with the same like dedication that the MCU has with the rest of Marvel. Uh, I mean, if you love the X Men movies, that's great. But like, go read the comics. There's there could be so much more going on there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel like Deadpool is actually the one that has come closest to get that feeling for it. And like, they've got. They've got Cable with his like techno organic virus on his neck, and uh, they got Domino running around, and like Colossus is actually Colossus. So yeah, and I also I don't. And it's funny. It's a funny movie. I don't really want to use this platform to like give a big pat on the back to a marketing department, but uh, they're kind of killing it with this movie. Mm -hmm. The teasers, the posters, the weird Thanksgiving paintings, the Bob Ross stuff. All of it has been really good. Um, seeing Cable uh, multiple times from different angles and stuff like that has just been really sort of like. Convincing, you know, mm -hmm. I, I I sort of winced the first time I heard uh, who was actually starring as Cable, and then because basically he's been multiple characters in comic. It's weird, movies. yeah, he's that dude is double dipping hard right now. Yeah. He's in, yeah, I mean he's he's Thanos and he's and he's Cable. So I mean Ryan Reynolds is right next to him, you know. Yeah, yeah, I mean there's a lot of double dipping between these universes. Yeah, so. who knows? Um, also coming out this year, this is kind of insane. We just got a Star Wars movie like 20 minutes ago. Yeah, uh, and this is this movie. This next movie is something like 123 days away. Yeah, Han Solo comes out uh, April 18th, is yep. it? Yeah. So we're getting our next spin-off sort of side story, Solo, a Star Wars story, uh, currently being directed by Ron Howard and starring, I can't say Al his name. Alden, Alden, Alden Aaron Reich. El Elrin, yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, Donald Glover as, as Lando, Lando, which is, I think, way cooler. But, um, yeah, like, it's kind of insane that this movie is this close and we don't know what it looks like. We don't know <laughs> how, it, how it feels. Like, I feel like this is sort of a testament to exactly how much faith Disney have has in Star Wars to be like, eh, just keep it under wraps. My or guess is we maybe they're worried get... about it. I don't know. Yeah, I think, so there's been some rumors about that, too. Um, I think uh, I'm warming up to this movie a lot. And I, so in terms of, like, stories that absolutely need to be told in the Star Wars universe, I didn't feel like Rogue One was entirely necessary, although it turned out fine. Uh, I really want to know what you know Obi Wan was doing for forty years uh, in the just desert, hanging out. just hanging out, kicking it. Um, but Han Solo, I've never really wanted to know more about what he was like in high school. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. There's like he's not exactly a mysterious character. Mm -hmm. So much of what makes him great is that he seems like he's sort of oh, I doesn't want to be there. You know, he just doesn't care. So well, to kind his, of dig into the, his entire arc yeah. from being this kind of like aloof, mean, you know, you know, discrediting mm -hmm. dude who shows up, who comes around and grows a heart by the end of the story in A New Hope, kind of tells everything you need to know about that character. That said, I am rapidly warming up to this, mm -hmm. A, because it's more Star Wars, and B, because uh, the stuff that Ron Howard's been tweeting out has been like really interesting and just enough that it, it sort of grabs me. Did you see his thing the other day of just like the inside of a ship? Yeah. And some gloves. And I'm like, cool. And there was that leaked Russian poster that was pro probably part of marketing. They showed off his jacket, which we also saw in leaked set photos. I like it. I like the idea of this like freshly minted Millennium Falcon with the weird blue stuff that we saw in Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. Also, I mean, this is going to be set in a really interesting part of the kind of the Star Wars, you know, uh, saga. Uh, it's actually, I think it's 10 years after Revenge of the Sith and 10 years before... A New Hope. Interesting. Uh, it's an area that if you look at kind of what's still canon and what's been explored, they haven't really gone near it. It's around Rebels, but it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit later uh, or a little bit earlier. I forget which. You can look at the whole timeline online. It's, um, But it's, 
it's in a weird spot where we don't know what the galaxy looks like exactly. Like we don't know what the Empire is up to, how the Republic's doing, like what what, what the what the vibe is. I mean, you watch you watch uh, Rogue One, and there's this. It's very similar to A New Hope or the original trilogy. And you watch the prequels, and it's all kind of things things falling. And then you know the TV shows are kind of cartoony, so it's sort of hard to get a feel of exactly how things would look. But this is the first time we get a live action movie that is directly between these trilogies. So question I have for you: R two D two and C three PO have been in literally every single Star Wars movie. How does huh. that work here? I don't know. Maybe they have like bootleg ones, you know? They Maybe. Like R2 and, and 3PO. Anyway, um, a movie that I've been looking forward to for a very long time, uh, eh, mostly out of curiosity, is uh, Alita Battle Angel, or Battle Angel Alita, or if you follow anime, Ganmu. This, uh, this is a weird, this, is a very, this isn't even like a popular anime manga series. This was um, one of the first series to get localized stateside, and James Cameron noticed it in the late 80s, early 90s, and has been saying since before Avatar that he wants to make a movie about this. Uh, clearly the themes are things that he's explored before. It's got cyborg arms, which you may have seen him deal with in Terminator, and you know, I guess Avatar to a lesser extent. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's got a battle angel, which is sort of what Dark Angel was. It's a, a lot of similar themes for him. However, he's so busy making Avatar sequels and theme parks and whatnot that he uh, handed this off to Robert Rodriguez, who did Sin City and Spy Kids and uh, Shark Boy and Lava Girl and mm -hmm. Desperado and a bunch of movies. Uh, and he's going to be making, the, he's directing this. Um, and it looks interesting. It looks kind of crappy in a lot of ways. I hate her eyes. I think they're yeah, very I'm, strange. I'm not a fan of her face, which uh, is a mean thing to say. It's not real. Yeah. But everything else is like really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you were saying before we started the show that uh, this could sort of be like this year's Valerian in uh, that, yeah. you know, it's kind of messy and it's rough around the edges, but it's stunning to look at and it's a nice afternoon at the theater. I mean, what's screwed up about this, in the same way that Valerian, uh, which was of course Luc Besson's massive, uh, you know, sci-fi flop last year, uh, this the, the hype for the source material isn't there. Like, even hardcore anime fans don't really jump on this movie because it's like, I dug into it because I was curious. I'm like, what's the deal with this? And I had to buy used copies of the manga because it doesn't exist officially out there. Wow. Um, well, hopefully like they fix that before the movie comes you'd out. You'd think so, wouldn't you? Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's not like if they were like, hey, we're making a Dragon Ball Z movie. Everyone knows what that is. Here it is. I mean, they already did that kind of. Let's forget about that one. Mm -hmm. uh, I could see this going either way. I think it's going to be interesting to look at at the very least um, because clearly they are throwing a lot of money at it. Uh, that's coming out, I think, in July. It's in the middle of the summer, though, which is which is promising. Uh, in the meantime, though, as far as faithful adaptations that involve CG-driven characters, Paddington 2, Paddington the Bear, he's back at it again. He's, he's back. coming out. He's hanging out with that family. He's, he's going gonna, to jail. He's, he's going to get that in trouble. trouble. God, I love that bear. We love that. So That movie is a we, great film. You, we, you guys so go watch We do Paddington. this like pretty much every other week, but really... That first one is a very good film. Yeah. It's actually a good movie. It's yep. not just like we're hyping it up ironically. We're kind of doing that too because mm -hmm. we're like adult men who like watch funny bear comedies. But that's a good movie. You can go on Rotten Tomatoes. That's got like a 98%. They're going to put that movie on the Criterion Collection. That's yeah. a good film. It's a good movie. They're going to teach it in schools about how to make good movies about bears. Peter Rabbit, you're on thin ice. I don't know how I feel about you being voiced by James Corden. That looks a little bit too trying to be edgy. There's probably a scene in that movie where he's on thin ice. <laughs> Probably. I don't know. But no, Paddington is wonderful. It's not just like, oh, it's a good kids movie. It's a great kids movie for adults, too. Yeah. It's also stunning. Like, it looks like... Uh I, I, it, like, it looks like Fantastic Mr. Fox or something. Yeah, like that. no, I mean, it, it has a very heavy like Wes Anderson vibe. That part is gross. I hate that part. That's when he not puts good. It, the things in it. Oh, he's getting oh, all kinds God. of cool. oh, disgusting bear. But yeah, like it's kind of cool. I think that because Paddington is this, mouth. is this like iconic, uh, you know, like British character. There's, I, I feel like this is almost this movie's like subsidized. Like it's kind of produced by, you know, and it's like, oh, like let's get everybody in the UK on board, and they get all these like famous, wonderful actors. You got Jim Broadbent there as the as the weird like Dutch antique store owner. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know, uh, Peter Safaldi's in there. There's a bunch of like wonderful actors and it's just, it's just charming. There's also the bear. The bear Robinson. is fabulous. Look what he does. He gets, he gets the Ooh. cream on the window and make, makes that Ooh, man He's mad. doing the nasty thing. Uh, anyway, go see the Paddington 2 in theaters. I think it's January 22nd. Yeah, so. we got invited to a press screening, but it was 11 a.m. on a Saturday, and we had to work on Comedy Button stuff that day, and I was, like, kind of bummed about it. Like, I really want to go see that bear movie with Max, just get, like, day drunk or something like that, you know? Yeah, hang that's, out. that's the sort of thing we do. Get arrested afterwards, you know, tell uh, the cops that we were in jail because we wanted to go see Paddington stop, 2. Stop, just, just stop. We're going to get in trouble. We're gonna get, no, man, I want to get in trouble after Don't, the film. Paddington we can, 2. We can, be our, we can become bears of ourselves, just go bounding about the town in our overcoats. We can the bear. Barely contain ourselves in public.
Pause. Oh, I like that one bit. There's no more. All right. That's it. Um, okay, so we love Star Wars. Some people really hate us for that f feeling we have. Let's agree on one thing. Let's not even talk about it. it and uh, this is going to be hard to do. Um, how did this go real quick? How the, the, no, don't, 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 don't. No, how did we get to a point where we can't talk about Star Wars on this show anymore without a bunch of people being like, hey, they ruined my childhood. No, it's fine. Adulthood ruined your childhood. Okay, so the mm, uh, the Last Jedi was one of the highest grossing movies of the year. Clearly, a lot of people didn't like it. But that being said, it's still it's not like it's a bomb of a Star Wars movie. It's still up there. It's I think it just just trailing behind the Force Awakens as mm -hmm. like the fastest money movie of the world or whatever. The, Ma I don't it made a billion dollars. Is. I think they're happy. Made a lot of money. Um, one thing that's gone kind of hand in hand with Star Wars since day one is, of course, toys. Uh, people accused. Uh, you know, of, of Star Wars movies of just throwing in aliens and characters for the sake of selling toys. Uh, with the new Star Wars movies, I feel like that is much less of a case. Yeah. Um, toys are kind of just, I feel like there's not as much love for them these days. Yeah, so the Hollywood Reporter did a story on this. Um, they basically, I think, like, to sort of analyze it before we jump into some quotes, obviously there's a little bit of franchise fatigue. Uh, you're never really going to have that sort of moment that you had with The Force Awakens that was 30 years in the making. Um, and also, like, the toys are just sort of all over the place this time, or as they are in general mm -hmm. these days. But they say, Panjiva, a data company that tracks the giant shipping containers that arrive at U.S. ports, says 6,587 of them with Star Wars gear were shipped in the seven months leading to The Last Jedi, but that's down 47% from the seven months leading to Rogue One in 2016, and off 56% from the same time period for The Force Awakens. So basically, they're tracking shipping containers, uh, which is a really interesting... We track video game sales all the time here. Yeah. Uh, at, at IGN. This is a really interesting way to look at things like that. Um, shipping containers were actually one of the big reasons there were Amiibo uh, shortages oh, yeah. when those first launched. Yeah. Uh, so it's an interesting way of looking at things, but apparently um, they're down in general. Uh, Stormtroopers are the best-selling People thing of the entire. You gotta, you gotta buy a lot of them so you can blow them up in your yard. Nearly 80% of this year's Star Wars haul hails from China. The container is about half the size of a big semi truck, and each one can hold about 6,000 Stormtrooper action figures, which happen to be among the biggest products this year. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Hasbro ships Stormtroopers by the container full, so people really love those. Now, we want to talk about this for a second. Obviously, there's a few things that are a lot of variables here. Aside from the fact that maybe kids today just don't play with toys as much and they mm -hmm. have apps and stuff and parents are like, well, why would I pay for a physical toy that's just going to take up space on my living room floor when I could get my kid, like, cookie tapper or whatever the new right. thing is. Um, <laughs> there's also the fact that the Star Wars toys have been split into kind of two different uh, categories. You've got some of the Black Series over here. They are, of course, the six-inch kind of collector-aimed action figures. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. One of those? Um, and we showed some of these off a couple weeks yeah. ago, but I really like some of these, you know, like um, that Snoke figure is great, he's got yeah. his weird feet, so Praetorian the, guards are awesome. They're, they're fine, they're nice, whatever, but the problem is they're more expensive, they're like 20 bucks, 25 bucks, depending on where you go. I think I saw Snoke at GameStop for, I believe, 40 bucks, which well, is Well, that's the one that comes with the throne. Right. Yeah, which so, I kind of want. And the problem, the whole reason that Star Wars toys took off in the first place is that they were historically very small. Like, there's actually a great show on Netflix right now called The Toys That Made Us that does mm -hmm. a wonderful deep dive on the history of Star Wars action figures, not just as how they resonate with, uh, with Star Wars or with how they are for toys, but really just how they are for just history. Like, they change the way people merchandise things. They change the way that movies get merchandised and how movies get made because of merchandise sales. Um, but you look at where kind of Star Wars toys have gone in recent years, they still make four-inch figures, uh, and they are just considerably... More rudimentary. Mm -hmm. um, this is a Boba Fett that I think is says 2006 on his leg. Uh, this is a gorgeous figure. I love this. He's got all this articulation. This is crazy. His helmet comes off. Oh, damn. See, he's got a, like a spare blaster back here. His cape is made of fabric. It's got paint on it. His little gun comes out. Um, this is a great figure. It's got all kinds of articulation and joints and whatnot. And here's one that came out, I think, two years ago. This and was the one that came with Han Solo, right? This one, no, this one came actually in along with the Slave One. Um, and pack-in figures are frequently kind of scaled down, but mm -hmm. even so, like his cape isn't even a separate piece. He's like right. four pieces of plastic. He can't even sit. His elbows don't bend. He's not even in like a cool pose. He's just kind of standing there, and that's pretty par for the course for most of these figures that we're getting uh, in kind of the modern era. Uh, like for example, here's another one. Here's two Yodas. Um, this Yoda right here is. From a few years ago, I think this is this is a, this is an older one. I think this is from 2007 or so. And he's got like paint all over him. He's got all this sculpting. He's got elbow joints. Uh, and this is a small figure. And small figures have always been sort of tricky to market because you're like, well, you're getting less of a toy. Mm -hmm. He came with like a whole piece of swamp, and he had like his his lantern and a bunch of sticks and his snake boyfriend and all that stuff. And here's a Yoda that came out. Uh, I don't know, like like last year. This is the most recent line. It's got these. Uh, 
these chips in their feet that you can use with this bracelet that makes them talk in case you don't do Yoda impressions for fun. He's got, I don't know, like ball jointed arms. He came with a, a lightsaber and a stick, I believe. But like you can, you can kind of tell there's like a clear difference in quality here. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm thinking, you know, there's a lot of factors at play here, but maybe, maybe the reason people are buying less Star Wars toys is that new Star Wars toys aren't that great. Yeah, so back to the Six Sense line, uh, they're not doing much better here. I mean, you've got Finn and his like weird village people clothes over here uh, with his shock stick. The paint is just not good on them. They're not, like, the, the joints are kind of messed up. Like, he just doesn't look good. He doesn't feel good. Like, take a look at this figure. He's just kind of like rubbery and yeah. sad. I mean, hat comes off, though. Yeah, that's, that's important. That's cute. I think that's very you know? important with toys is that their hats come off. Over here we got Poe, which is a little better, but still, like, they just can't nail Oscar Isaac check, in this it, scale. Check this out. All. If you put the hat on Snoke, he looks like Popeye. That's really great. <laughs> ugh, 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 ugh. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Star Wars toys are, like, a thing that I've grown up with. Um, watching this documentary, again, uh, The Toys That Made Us on Netflix, uh, it really got me thinking, like, are, are toys going away? Like, are we seeing the end of toys in general? Um, maybe? It kind of sucks. Yeah, I mean, but we saw like bad stories about Toys R Us filing for bankruptcy. Toy sales are sort of down. Uh, on the flip side, other toys are sort of like skyrocketing, like those weird finger monkeys and all that. Gotta other love things. those finger monkeys. Yeah. Um, um, so I don't know. I think in some ways they're doing better. In other ways, uh, people are moving away from them. It's weird to tell people all day about all the awesome video games that they should be playing and then complain that. Toy sales are down yeah. because we're sort of helping that, right? But I like toys. There's one toy that is not going down in the sales, and that toy is the Lego. Um, Wait, no, it, it totally is going down in the sales. Is it? Yeah, that's, really? yeah we reported on that last year. I thought Lego was still, still doing okay. No, they're, they're not. They're okay. spread too thin. Well, they're still making Lego. <laughs> they're making lots of Lego. Uh, I just found this great thing online of just a whole bunch of new Lego sets coming out in 2018, and I figured we could go through some of them. Obviously, uh, there's a lot not accounted for here. We're going to get Lego sets for uh, Solo, A Star Wars Story, for uh, probably Infinity War, mm -hmm. uh, probably Ant-Man and the Wasp, uh, Incredibles 2. There's a lot of stuff we haven't seen yet, and of course there's going to be stuff trickling out in the holidays. But in the meantime, here's some LEGO sets to look forward to in 2018, if that's your sort of thing. Hell yeah. Man, people in the chat are really stoked on LEGO. People love... <laughs> LEGO's great. LEGO's, a, LEGO's wonderful. Um, LEGO is timeless. Um, if you are one of the hardcore collectors who's into like the really just the big complex sets, you might know about the Modular City. Uh, they've made like, they basically make, they're making a city block. They're making this insanely, just, just this ridiculously over the top uh, city you kind of click together and you put buildings in it. And they added a corner that has a diner on it. Wow. Uh, which I love, this, this thing is so great. You can see there's a little boxer up there. Um, there's photos online of all like the interior and stuff. There is a recording studio in here. And oh it my has, god. It has, it has like a little microphone and has people like... I love... In there. Look at that. So first of all, these are some of my favorite kits. If I had a, like, a big home, I would totally have an entire wall of Dude, these. Dude, I have a big home and it takes all of, the, all of the strength to not just fill it with these things. Right. Yeah, I mean, the, the fact that they're modular is so cool because you can sort of just set up your own city. Uh, the fact that this thing looks like a jukebox is yeah. awesome. The little car it comes with. It's, yeah, but that's what I love is like the details, right? When you open up the doors or peek inside the windows mm -hmm. or look around the back of these things, like there's food on the table, you know? There's like a little chef working behind the bar. Like, yeah, it's, it's awesome. I don't, I don't know. I feel like there's probably some psychological disorder that is uh, obsessing over little miniature things, but this one's definitely kind of scratched that itch. Uh, this one is uh, 170 bucks. Uh, if that's not in your budget, well, good news, there's a very cheap one of this hot dog man. Um, I, love, I love him. I will be buying this toy. This one's teeny. This is probably going to be in one of those little, little plastic bags, so it's mm -hmm. probably going to be like, you know, five or six bucks. Um, but look at that. Look at those wieners. He's just stuffing those buns. It comes with two hot dogs, one on the roof and one in his hat yeah. hand. Yeah, the, uh, the one good. on the roof is actually put there to distract uh, pigeons and seagulls from going mm -hmm. after the one he's selling. And then you uh, can have, there's a garbage can there too you if you're just, vegan. You can like role play if he drops it on the ground, you can just throw it in the trash. They made a pizza truck last year uh, that's sort of a similar set that I really so need to get. It's just a, a, guy, a little guy in a pizza truck and he sells pizzas out of also, it. Also, I love that he's picking up that hot dog with a wrench. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, what a weird man. Uh, anyway, uh, in other sort of city, you know, what? city world. This is also like, there's so many licensed Lego sets. I love the city stuff. Is that I think Steve Bannon in the bottom right? <laughs> uh, it could be. It's really hard to tell. <laughs> this looks like the house that Bart Simpson moves into when he's roommates with Tony Hawk. Yep. Like, this is such like a, a blank check scenario where there's an indoor rock climbing wall and a jungle gym and then a half pipe and a basketball hoop and what appears to be spray paint. This rules. You can skate up and do dunks. Yeah, this is uh, this is the modular skate house. It's forty bucks. You're gonna see like a clear difference in price between stuff that's just generic Lego and stuff that's like 
you know, Disney or DC branded. Uh, so if you like to skateboard on the wall, well, there you go. You can have a cool house. Live out all your fantasies. I really like that set. Um, this is something I'm actually seriously tempted to get. Uh, this is a giant Technic set. This is the Mac Anthem. Jeez. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this thing is, uh, like all the Technic sets, it, it, you know, it's got like working chains and pistons and cranks and all that nonsense. And of course, there's like three different models you can make. The one that caught my attention <laughs> is you can build a replica garbage truck. You can make the garbage truck that comes around at 6 o'clock on Thursday mornings and wakes your pets up. That one. Uh, and I just like, I kind of love the idea of having, I don't know, this, this foot and a half long $200 garbage truck in my house. And I'm like, why, why do you have that? I'm like, mind your business. I, I, I just, I like it. I like trash. Anyone that's that deep into your nest already knows that you're warped. Yeah. I mean, I've got this problem where like, I love Lego. I love, I love building the sets. I love playing with them. Uh, but it becomes very quickly an addiction where I'm like, oh, well, I have the hot dog cart. I need the pizza truck as well. Mm -hmm. Who's going to eat these hot dogs and pizza? I need the modular city block. Um... <laughs> We talked about Far Cry 5 earlier. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in the new LEGO sets. Wow! There is like some weird woodland crime scenes like theme this year, which I think is hilarious. Um, okay, so to to uh, let's let's piece this together. No yeah. pun intended. This man stole a log uh, from the tree that he stole honey from, and he's escaping down the flume. Uh, while his friend is shoveling away the evidence so, and the cops are trying to catch I'm him. I'm incredibly confused here. The set is called Mountain Fugitives. It's $10. They stole um, honey. I think the beehive is a new piece because they're putting it everywhere, but it's got this very like, oh, those bees are going to get out and bite those people. Oh, you know they're what? The hiding... beehive's a front. They're hiding gold bars. No, they're, yeah, they're hiding gold bricks gold bricks in the tree. But Unless I think it's, honey bucks. it's just incredible that this, this insane woman is escaping... <laughs> on a log and using a shovel as a, like, <laughs> that's like something you would see on cops. Yeah. Like, that's like, oh, oh, she's gone in the river. She's fashioned a crude kayak out of some timber and is using a shovel to escape. This is you like an anti-meth PSA. Th that's, I, I didn't want to say it. This no, is generally, I said it. So, Lego City has it's officially- the first episode of the okay, year. Yeah, fine. Yeah, Lego has, a, the new theme is episodes of cops about meth. Yeah. Like, it is Straight seriously, up. it is woodland insanity. It, if you want Far Cry 5 Lego, good news because you're getting it. This theme continues. Look at this situation. Wow! <laughs> Look at this. The bear is, they got money that they're laundering. The whole thing that I love here is you've got this, you've got this, like, doomsday prepper up here who's scrubbing himself nude in a wash tub. And like, I they, ain't coming down until you bring my what, five wives. What is happening? What is happening here? Because does he clearly, that thing? I, I'm un, undoubtedly, but also there's a beehive. Ah! <laughs> Look at the bear. So I don't. What's what's happening? They've got a net for the bear, but there's also a woman who's running away with money. And there's a dune buggy, and there's the guy up there. There's this weird bear grills dude up there hanging out with the bees. What's the chopper? Okay, is so, the chopper for the is it for arresting human criminals? Is it is it getting the bears? I don't know. What they're doing here. Okay, so here's my theory. In Lego world, honey is a hallucinogenic drug that you can smoke to get high. And if you sell it, the cops will come after you. And that's why th these cops aren't just like regular cops. They're out in full motion. They're holding like f f cuffs and running down the street. What's, like, up, what's up with that chain hanging off the edge there? Like what is, what's happening in this world? That dude up there is only in a hard drug scenario. That is the type of situation you don't just, there are like, he's top five drunk. You don't just wake up on a Sunday morning no. and hold a club that dude is and like threaten a, the that police. That dude is like a card-carrying Oregon militia member. <laughs> and guess what? This isn't even all of them. Here's another one that gets even stranger. What? Because the cops are hiding in trees to bust these people. They is, got, why was this a police station? Do they have a cougar? This is, so their last one was called, uh, Mountain arrest that's 60 bucks if you really want to ball out with your with your Lego money. This is Mountain Police Headquarters. It's 90 bucks. Look at all this stuff that's going on. I am an adult man and I'm so excited about all the craziness that's happening in the world of Lego. So we got the running theme there. There's the honey bricks, which obviously they're smoking and selling as a hard, hard opiate. Uh, over in the middle there, that's a mountain lion that they trained because police dogs are no Do you know use how, in the forest. What kind of insane jurisdiction is it where they have police? Pumas. <laughs> <laughs> also, if, if that's not the case, how unsafe is it to go work there when there's a puma living directly below your police station? Also, you know who's gonna get caught by that net? Only someone that's high out of their mind, because it's right in plain sight. <laughs> but look at that dude, he's in the log costume. He's got like a he's got like a, a crowbar. That's great. This is a great set. I love this. That's really good. You should buy that for your kids and teach them. I will buy this for myself and, and reenact my favorite episodes of Cops using this nothing but the set. Anyway, if you're in, don't interested, smoke honey. Don't do the don't do the bee don't drugs. Don't do honey. Yeah, it's bad uh, for you. 
Anyway, if you like your Lego sets to be, uh, I, don't, I don't know, a little bit less insane, uh, well, too bad, because they're still very insane over in the Justice League area of things. Uh, they're still making lots of sets based on the Lego Batman movie. Of course they are. <laughs> this one is the Justice League anniversary party, <laughs> which I love that you're like, all right, so Justice League, what do you want? You want, you want their, their, like, their, their satellite headquarters? Do you want the Hall of Justice? Do you want like the Batmobile? They're like, no, 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 no. It's a dance floor, and it's got Hawkman, and it's got, <laughs> it's got Green Arrow, and it's got... Yo, hold up, hold up, hold up. Is that the, crypto, the, the dog? Turn, the turntables and speakers in this thing are dope as hell. Yeah. I want, I want those just on their own. I don't want the rest of this birthday-themed celebration party. Well, you can you can get it if you buy the set. Or... All right, I'll do that, and I'll give, them, I'll give the rest of my friends. Look I love that. that little dog with the cape. Yeah, so great. anyway, this one's 30 bucks. I, I love this. Can they make a movie about that dog? This probably, yeah, that's, that's, crypt, a... that's Crypto, the, the Kryptonian dog. That's a DC Hound. film I'm excited to actually see someday. Uh, and then, again, I love this one. This one's crazy. If you're uh, 100 years old, you might remember the old Adam West Batman show, which mm -hmm. had Vincent Price as the Eggman. Oh, he's, he's a clever ghoul who'll throw eggs at you. They made a mech for him. They made the, 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 the egghead mech food fight, which is 30 bucks. This is... This is such a weird long walk to get to this Lego set. Like wow. if you brought this back to the 1960s, people would have a lot of a lot of questions. Like one, what is Lego? Two, why are you dressed what, like Ace Ventura? What is Three, he, who's Ace Ventura? <laughs> what's a mech? And why did you make this weird like Danish modular figurine of Vincent Price's odd shaven? Does it, Yeah, there he is. Does it shoot eggs? Because uh, I think it does. It I comes think, with little eggs, I think, and yes, all the Legos yes, now have yes, little like yes, yes, things. Put, can... I think you put the eggs on its on its uh, left arm there, but it also it also has claws. That's that's a good mech suit to wear the night before Halloween. What a weird what a Orex weird and set. Uh, and of course, um, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be Lego without without Star Wars. Um, they they held back on a ton of Lego Star Wars Last Jedi sets because I think they didn't want to spoil stuff. Mm -hmm. um, It'd be good. It'd be good if they didn't. They didn't put this one out because this kind of gave us an idea of what we were in for with the uh, <laughs> the Battle of Crate. But they're doing those uh, the micro fighters, um, and you've got the um, the ATM six, the big old the big boy, mm -hmm. uh, and then there's the the skimmers that you can stick your foot out the side of. And these are these are kind of cool because if you can't afford like the big giant sets, here you go. Uh, and if you can't tell that that man in the middle with the with the curly hair, that's the same guy from the police set earlier. He got his ish together after he'd smoking all that honey and getting. Well, arrested. now he's hooked on those red orbs. He loves the red, red studs. He's doing crate community service, eating that salt every night. Also, I love when when you put the the, the crate skimmers on in the skill. It just looks like a weird hair dryer. This is a completely insane set out of context, and yet after seeing all the things you just showed me, this feels boring and normal. Yeah, this pretty, <laughs> feels pretty safe. I honestly, I'm kind of. I love that. Like, I feel like they're just not monitored. Like, there's no style guide over in like the Lego City department. They're like, yeah, let's have let's have. Good news, everybody. Lego Florida. Here yeah, it is. You have the honey cops, and then you also have the uh, the birthday party, and then the the egg robot. Like I don't know what's going on over there, but you know what? Yep. I love it. Yep. Um, anyway, that's twenty bucks for the two of these little guys. Uh, if you want uh, to reenact the scene where um, Luke milks that <laughs> odd blubber porpoise on the side of the rocks, too bad you can't do it because there's no blubber porpoise that comes with this. But if you want like a cute fish and a porg and Ray and Luke, uh, this is the Octo Island training. That's thirty bucks. You can hide a. Uh, I don't know, kyber crystals in that rock. Oh, there's a little porg in there. Yeah, a little porg. I, li I like can, this set a lot. You can have a scene where, a deleted scene where Ray cooks the porg and then decides that it is too fatty and has a fish instead. I wish they had the frog nuns in here. Those guys are They really guys should great. do frog nun minifigs. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, uh, they also, of course, have the full-on defensive crate set, which is, I believe, 90 bucks. That's got, this is like a proper, this is a proper Lego set. Look at that. That's a, that's a great ship at that mm -hmm. scale. I really like that. Um, good news, though, if you hate The Last Jedi and you want to forget it ever happened, they are re-releasing some good stuff. They're doing a sort of brand Ooh. new, redone uh, Moss Eisley Cantina. You've got, uh, you've got Han and Greedo, and you've got Wooer the Bartender, and you've got Davin Felth, the Stormtrooper. And you have that weird thing that they put outside, that, I like, uh, they, washer dryer. That thing they always say that is, like, they always say it in books that it's a land speeder, but I don't buy it. I think it's honestly just, like, a, ga like a giant gashapon machine or yeah, something. Yeah, we've never actually seen it move. Yeah, it just sits there. So, anyway, you can get that thing, and then the little room that they go in, that, like, Best Western suite that they have with the air, air <laughs> conditioner and everything. Uh, this one I'm really stoked on. So stoked I had to rotate it awkwardly so that it would fit in our aspect ratio on the screen. This is, like, um, oddly sexual. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, they've been doing these these kind of basically Star Wars bionicles for a while now, uh, and I don't I don't love them. I think they're horrible when they're stop that, get out of there, <laughs> get out of there, you pinup man, <laughs> you play dude. Look at that. Uh, yeah, it's uh, busting uh, makes me feel. Uh, good. Do I need to rotate it on here? I don't know if no, I can. Stop. Um, but no, like I 
I collect Boba Fett's. So obviously, I have a serious problem with that. But I'm like, Boba Fett works so well at this at this scale in this it does, line. Yeah. Uh, they also have a Darth Vader coming out. Uh, this guy's thirty bucks. I mean, I've I think I had like one Bionicle when I was growing up, and mm-hmm. I was like, interesting. No, these sets are all over the place for me because when they do like humans, like Ray and Finn, it yeah, looks you're like, weird. But you're when like, they oh. do people like stormtroopers, I, well, I know. Yeah, like they make Boba like Fett's a, a like, human, a, like a like a Donnie Yen, but he looks like a weird like Swedish blow up doll <laughs> yeah, or something. Like, it's just I don't like it. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. You commented on uh, on the whatever dog that was earlier. I was wrong. That's not the that's not Superman's dog. This is actually Crypto. They made a whole set about it. It's Superman and Crypto team up against Lobo. What? They made yeah. a Lobo. They made minifig? a Lobo minifig. Damn. Uh, yeah. So we should do like a we should do a ranking of like the most uh, not safe for children Lego sets they make out there. Yeah. They, got, they uh, have like a Deadpool out there. So what is that like? Which is motorcycle ship he has? I love that's that. His, that's his. That's his. That's his hog. That's that Lobo's rules. hog. He loves that hog. Uh, uh, and you know, and that is, Superman this, comes with all the stuff he hates. It's like all his favorite green things. That <laughs> <laughs> I guess the idea is that Lobo comes and he, he beats him up and he puts him in that green chamber. I don't know. This is like if my action figure came with a bunch of like uh, manga. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty weird. It's it's your bunch it's of anime a DVDs. Is that like Lobo's Roomba down there? I, it's got like this weird brick. Thing. I don't know what that is. Uh, but yeah, that, that's a that's a cool set. That's uh, that one's twenty bucks, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. There's also a very interesting uh, divide where clearly. The budget for or the, how much it costs to get something that's based officially on a movie does cost more than stuff that's based just on a thing. This is based on the DC, this is the DC superheroes line. This isn't like the Batman the movie line. But um, speaking of superhero movies and stuff, uh, there's also the Rhino face off for the Black Panther movie. Oh, um, we don't know a ton about this movie yet. Like, I mean, there's you know a bunch of trailers out and stuff. That comes we just out. found out that Kendrick Lamar is doing the entire soundtrack. Or Seriously? Score. Yeah. Oh my God, that yeah. rules! Uh, they put up the first song today. Okay. I'm super excited about that because they put out one of the best albums of last yeah, year. Yeah. Well, I'm excited if this scene actually makes it in the movie. If they have mm-hmm. like a rhinoceros with bicycle handlebars on the roof, I would I will be very excited about that film. Yeah, that rules. Does he run into that weird sideways elevator thing that they? I think in? so. I think that's a space age minecart. I have a lot of questions, and I hope none of them are answered in this film. This looks like a good time. <laughs> Uh, anyway, does it come with ice? Is that their drug? No, that's uh, vibranium, probably. I think. No. Maybe, no, I think it's vibranium. Don't say that. Vibranium. 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 Uh, anyway, if you're like one of those, uh, I don't know, mature adult like like Lego How collectors. How long is this segment? I, there's 18 Lego sets. There's so many of them. Uh, they also are adding to their architecture series with the iconic skyline of Shanghai. If Ooh. you want to be like, ah, oh, yes, I collect Lego, but I'm an adult, so I get the serious ones. I have the Guggenheim. I have the Sydney Opera House, and now I have the Shanghai Skyline, which is cool. They're good sets. They're fine. I want San Francisco. I'd be down to get that one because we live there. But, I mean, they're also doing a Las Vegas one, uh, which is which is cool. They don't have pictures of that out yet. But That, uh, that blue building's weird. It just looks like like a, like a cheap party flute. It looks like blue. big gum. Big, big gum. Yeah, Most Lego looks like stick. big gum, though. Anyway, uh, and then finally, of course, they're continuing the Minecraft line of Lego. Uh, so there's a bunch of them out there. They're all really cool. I like this one, the zombie cave. Uh, I remember when they announced Lego Minecraft, and I was like, well, that seems redundant and stupid. And here I am being like, well, that was actually a great idea. Is that a zombie people. child? That is a regular child with a hat and a cookie. No, 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 no. I'm up talking the top? In, in, up, upper middle next to the bat. That's a zombie baby. Oh, it's baby. a zombie baby. Look at the zombie baby. That's horrible. Aw. Anyway, there's a bunch of those. So those are some of the Lego sets coming out in 2018. I love talking about toys. It's so much fun to do that. Me too. I'm glad Um, we have a place where we can do that. Yeah. um, So on the subject of toys, uh, I've mentioned that I I, I can't do Lego. It's because it's too much of just a slippery slope. And once you get one, you got to get more of them. However, I do have a weird, weird new hobby that I'm very excited about. I found scale model furniture from Japan. Um, There's a hobby company called Hasegawa that does import these. And they make 1 12th scale furniture for your dolls and toys. Uh, and I've bought a lot of it. I keep buying it because I really like it. Uh, here's this, uh, this, this restaurant set. Uh, and it's all, it's all pretty easy to snap together. It's mostly pre-colored. Uh, this one comes with all these weird accessories. It's got a tiny little iPhone that you have to paint. And there's a flip phone here if you've got like, I don't know, someone's parents hanging out. So wait, dinner. is that like someone on a date with someone from 25 years ago? Exactly, yeah. I don't know when they made this. Uh, it looks like an iPhone 4. I don't know. Yeah, for, so for scale, here's what it looks like next to a totally out of scale figure. Uh, but these are mostly, uh, let's see, who do we got here? Here's uh, Freddie Mercury, lead singer of Queen. He's just hanging out there. We can get. Uh, can we get a close up of this? Yeah, maybe we get Michael Jackson here. It's very small. Hello and welcome to my restaurant. <laughs> yeah, and there's menus. Hold on, let me get out the menus. Look at that. You can sit in the chair. I like uh, to have dead people over at my Italian. Where did I put the, the menus? Are, look at this. They got tiny little, tiny little restaurant menus with all pictures of food in it. Oh, what are they going to order? Are they going to get the number? Oh, try this. I highly recommend it. Yeah. 
Uh, I recommend the boiled snails. <laughs> oh, and if you're on the, the value value menu, uh, I also have maybe if if it's uh, just you know doing the doing the serious stuff, no time for that. Got to do some work to make the money to go to the restaurant. I got this desk. I love this desk. Look at this. It's such a realistic desk. You can even pop out the drawer and have it so that it's come here. Get get out of it. I'm gonna break this thing on the, on the video show. You can clip it in there so the door drawer is open and you can like hide stuff in there. Um, but yeah, these things are like between like ten and like. Don't make that face at the camera. Look at that. You can open the drawer. See? Look at that. The drawer the drawer's you know open. Freddie Mercury's having for lunch. It's a large, lukewarm plate That's of not to boiled scale. oysters. No, you ever, uh, you're in a restaurant. Everybody and, loves a good plate of boiled oyster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I got these folding chairs that come with these tables. I, I realize this is like, I've gone insane, and this is like, this is the weird, this is like a level of dorkiness we haven't actually, like, you know, reached before. But check this out. Have you ever been playing with your x men figures and be like, man, they're way too excited. They're having much too much fun out there. Well, good news. Here's Cyclops reading a Time magazine. Hey, real talk. Has uh, Cyclops ever gotten like a steak at a restaurant and then like seared it himself? That's a cool idea. I Wouldn't think that be great. Yeah. Him, like a hibachi. So joint? actually, if you do dig into it, I don't think there is actually heat from his optic blast. It's all uh, kinetic force. Exactly why that character sucks. Yeah. <laughs> We got Trunks, who's just like scratching his head, not paying attention in class. Anyway, I don't have to wear any Trunks. I just show my balsams to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I love these toys. Uh, they're 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 like they're seriously super cheap. If you got a bunch of action figures on your desk and you want to do weird dollhouse stuff with them, these are I like. Was, so I was hanging I was hanging out with my niece over Christmas break. I saw uh, a picture that you were too. You guys were playing Switch. It was really adorable. Yeah. And she has a dollhouse, and she had a bed in it where she took like she's really into dinosaurs right now, and she took a raptor and put it in the bed under the blanket. I and love I was like, that. wow, we play with toys just like little kids yeah. do. I don't know. It's like weird. It's like surrealism kind of. Look at this. Piccolo's got a dog. He's taking. He's playing with the dog. He's patting the dog. Oh, who's a, who's a good boy? Um, but yeah. If you like, if you're. I, I don't know really how to sell these. If you're real weird, great news because <laughs> they make stuff for weird people. Who can, look at that. They look like they're at the DMV or something or like what in a bad, <laughs> terrible study hall. Uh, I want to talk about real quick um, a officially licensed PlayStation product called Stubbins. We've had them on the show a bunch of times before. They keep making them. Uh, they've pretty much covered everyone from Horizon to Bloodborne to Ratchet and Clank. Uh, these are really adorable because they're kind of like Funko Pops but like soft and plushy. Uh, so they are making Kratos and Atreus from the brand new God of War game. They look awesome together. Uh, they're coming out soon. They have little Velcro accessories, which you can stick to their hands and stuff like that. Uh, so there we got a bow and arrow. We've got the hatchet or the axe. Um, what I like about these is that they are really cute versions of very uh, sort of mature themed terrific things that we've seen in upcoming video games or previous video games. They'll be available soon on the PlayStation Store. Uh, if you want to dig into the past a little more and you remember a uh, iconic large woman named Fat Princess. I feel bad even like saying her name in 2017. I do too. That's all, it's 2018, so. 2018. That's the year we're bringing it back. Yeah. Uh, this is Fat Princess. She's great. She's really adorable. I like to <laughs> that this is a family. We haven't seen their mother. So maybe this is this is how maybe these two got together. And that would be this little guy right here. So what do you think? I think so. What did you call my wife? What did you say? What did you call her? <laughs> she's she's beautiful to me. I love her. <laughs> he looks so I mean he looks so angry. The whole thing in the anyway, new one is he's they're called the Stubbins, and you can buy them on the official PlayStation Gear store. They range from anywhere between seven and fourteen bucks. What'd you say about my wife? How dare you? These aren't out yet, but look at this adorable little mohawk. Look at that. How cute is that? Pretty cute. Isn't that great? Yeah. She's got a little crown. Yeah. It's great. Um, what else we got? Did we get the Shape of Water wall scroller on there? I didn't bring it out Did here. Bring that out there? No. I don't know. Anyway, we got it. The the this the Shape of Water, which the answer is it's round. Are you uh, really? Are you describing a wall? I'll scroll describe wrong? the wall scroll. Oh, they sent us a, pi a picture. Anyway, no. Um, no. Talk about that next time. We were gonna. Mil um, Oh, they are. Okay, let's take a look at the festive birthday party. Uh, on birthdays, uh, people are supposed to uh, get presents. Look at that. With once again, Jordan Parker is on the right there. Uh, it's his birthday. We got real balloons that are sitting perfectly still. Um, he got like, us a present, which is crazy, but he got us a Christmas present. And this is the, uh, what, 12 inch scale Wampa. Yeah. Oh. Uh oh. Wampa and Luke Skywalker from the cave on Hoth. This Wampa is one of my favorite things we've ever had on this show. So, yeah, um, just quick, quick like break here. We said, we said earlier that Star Wars toys have gotten worse. There still are old ones that are terrible, such as this one. 
and this smell, one doesn't smell great. I think he was smoking when he was five. I think this was this was uh, this was probably 1997 when these came out. Um, that was in, in honor of the the Star Wars special edition, where they were like, hey, maybe the Wampa could look cool in our new version of the movie, and somebody at, at Kenner was like, yeah, but what if we made it look like this? Which was which was bad. Does his pants come down? That's weird. I, I. It's not too late for Christmas cards. It's so it's so nice and huggable. Oh, you can't fit the hat on there. No, you. I can't. went on Amazon and I was looking at doll clothes for this. I think it'd be fun to dress him up in like a little baby soccer player. Um. So yeah, we do this show every week. Some weeks there's no there's no news, so we yeah. just play with toys for like you know half a, a full hour. Mm-hmm. I want to I, I want to start this year off on a really good note, and I want to remind you all that um, growing up can be easier than you think if you have a little bit of fun with it. Uh, my friend here in the party shirt just said that he went on Amazon to buy dolls' clothes for this large white wolf man. <laughs> so um, he seems to be doing okay, all things considering. Um, be easy on yourself this year. It's hard out there, and it's miserable. Um, buy yourself some toys. Treat yourself well. Uh, be a kid again a little bit. Just be kind of dumb and goofy. And you can get the old Rancor on eBay, and you can. Make no, them, you don't have to make. If, make if, if you suffer from, uh, you know, from seasonal depression, it's a it's a dark time of year. It's pretty pretty dreary. Don't buy the Rancor on eBay. It's the most upsetting toy. Look at it. It's awful. For just five dollars a day. Oh, don't you start with that. Don't you start. You can take care of this large, manly cave bear and clean some of the poop out of this dungus. Because I'm sure it grows in there like large white dogs do. You got mad at me yesterday because I said I was going to put gum in his hair? Yeah, because I don't want to put peanut never butter in his back and have to get it out. Anyway, that was the first Up at Noon for this year. We're off on a weird start, and we're glad you're joining us on this strange ride into yeah. adult middle-aged dementia. Yeah. When, how will they know? I when don't it, know. When it sets in, how will they know? I don't know. All right, we'll be back next week, hopefully with some exciting, hot new news to talk about. But if not, we have thousands, thousands of Micro Machine toys to play with. A whole mm -hmm. big bag of them. They belong to Marty Sleva, so there's tons of hair in here. It's really gross. Anyway, we'll see you guys next week. And remember that. Goodbye. <laughs> Are we still on? Can we end the show now? He's, he, it didn't freeze. He's just not moving. <laughs> it's a weird show. There's like wolf hair everywhere.